Hey, what's up? Today, I wanted to share with you my simple formula for making B sections or breakdowns, and I'll show you how to apply it to both situations in a sec, but let it be known that this isn't the end all be all formulas for everything you'll ever make in your life, but what it does help with is keeping the flow going when making a track. The TLDR of it is when you take your chords or your sample or whatever the main ingredient of your track is, you filter it down, and add single note string sound on top. That's it, it's so simple but sounds so good and you can bring the strings back later on to really tie it all together. Of course, you can add a little bit of finesse which I'll show you but this easily lets you create a new section with a similar vibe to the original. And heads up, I mainly make house music but you can apply this to whatever you want. Okay, now let's put it to practice. This is a track I made last week. It's pretty dope and you know I do this thing here where like I'll just make these little ideas but I never fully show y'all how I end up finishing these ideas. So this is one of those processes where I get to go ahead and take something like this and just add this like cool little sound on top. I kind of build things together right? So let's go ahead and make a breakdown section. I have this idea here. And this is my main little chord section here. It's one of my Oberheim expander chords, link to it down below, little sample pack with a bunch of different sounds. And first thing first, I need to copy this pattern to another pattern so I don't screw it up. I work in these four pattern chunks. I usually know that 311, 715 are kind of my breakdown sections, completely irrelevant. But here we are, pattern 11. We'll paste this pattern in here. Right, and first thing first, we'll take our sample, our chord, and filter it down. And you want it pretty, pretty low. You could do some cool kind of envelope -y things, but I don't know. There's a better technique that I'll get to in a little bit. I kind of just like leaving it a little more staticky, like this, right? Yeah, that's cool. So now let's go to track three, and this is gonna be our chord sample, or our string sample, I should say. And I sampled this off of my Nord, as I always use this string sample here. And there's a couple different ways that we can use this. We can just play C, because I know that the notes I play are C, D sharp, C, and then G sharp, I'm guessing? Yeah, that's a G sharp. As if I can tell the difference with my ear, I just know that this is G and that's G sharp. So I'm gonna keep it simple, play this back. I kinda like the way C sounds. Octave up sounds pretty cool too. And I kind of like getting in that dog whistly territory, right? But most importantly to me, I'm gonna turn up our high pass and this is already all the way up. And I'm gonna bring it down so that it's just kind of this weird little whisper way in the background. And if it does get a little too dog whistly, I'll turn our width down. We'll turn this up as well. Awesome. Yeah, I think this works. And if we wanted to be safe in terms of like, will we have enough time for this to keep going? I can hold this and change our loop to say forward loop, change our ending point and then move our looping point. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so that works. Let's go ahead and put this in the sequence on our first page. I'll put a step here and I want our trigger to hold down for 64 steps. Who would have thunk? Oh, right, and I also need this to be a C6. So up an octave. Let's see how that sounds. There it is. All right, to make it feel like more of a breakdown section or a transitional section, we're also gonna take the kick out. This is a simple one. I did it right now with our global mutes. That's probably bad practice. What you really wanna do is go into that track, go to your step editor and clear out the sequence. So now we have this. Oh yeah, that's totally a breakdown section, right? Because if we get out of this, right here, let's play, let's play it in proper order. We're here jamming. Then you go into the breakdown, which is the section here. Yeah, you feel that, right? It feels good, it feels good. Now, here are some bonus tips to kind of keep things interesting. From the previous pattern, I bounced down pattern uh, hi-hats three and four into, their, into one track, right? 
But if we go to this breakdown pattern, we only hear the open hat. But check this out, in this pattern lives that open hat, or the closed hat. Right? Da, 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 da. The reason I'm saying this, it's only because I have eight tracks on here. But what I'm trying to get across is adding a new, small, simple hi-hat sound to kind of help keep the rhythm going. So in the case of this, instead of replacing this, I'm going to take track one time. six, which is my vocal, one time. No, I lied. I'm taking track five. I need track five to go. That vocal is too tight. Um, and we'll find a new closed hi-hat. Sure. And check this out. I'm going to go and take our delay off. We'll leave the reverb there, and I'm gonna clear this track out. All I'm gonna do is this. And the reason I am pasting such a simple pattern is because I want this hi-hat to kind of help hold the rhythm down, which in this case was being held down by the kick, but the kick is now gone. So what we are left with is just nothing there, right? No big staple, and this will kind of just give us a little ticking sound to keep us on track. Right? Let's say we pitch it down so we can really hear it. Go to our filter, high pass it. And if we really wanted to get really interesting, we can say on these two steps, turn our velocity down. So listening to this, here's regular velocity. And I want these to be even lower. That's cool. So copy, paste. And so that'll paste it on these two and these two. And we'll do the same thing, take this whole page, copy it, paste, paste, paste. Right? One time. And this brings up another tip, which is to shorten or replace the up hat. So if we listen to this here, I'm gonna go to that track, and I'm actually gonna go to our amp page, make it even shorter. and then bring down our, our volume. Now, if you really wanted to push this really far, we'll copy this pattern. I'll go, let's just jump here for the sake of it. And we could take our kick out. I just muted it again. Again, let's stick with good practice here. We'll clear that out of this pattern. So now if we play this back, right? String sample, super prominent. Then if you go into this version here with the clap, then we'll go back into the full version, mute the bass. Awesome, you kind of get the idea right? You get the vibe for it? So now let's take it a step further and create a B section to this. Again, we're on this pattern already. I'm gonna just go ahead and copy it onto this section here, which is usually my outro or alternate section when performing live. Again, irrelevant information. But we're here and we want to create a new version of this. We'll, of course, start with our main ingredient. Filter it down. Now, one of my favorite things to do is add another up hat that has a bit longer tail than the one before. For example, the one that we have here, right? And this could be layered or completely new. And this might be a bit tricky to explain, but what I love doing is using more staccato sounds and percussive elements by default. And this allows me the room to add sounds with a longer tail because the tails aren't too long to begin with. So if you're having trouble finding a way to change up your percussion during this section, try changing your percussion in the section before, right? The previous pattern just to give you a little bit more wiggle room. So let's try and move things around with this up hat here. And by up hat, I just mean the right, which is this sound here. We're gonna, this is kind of what we did in the breakdown section, right? I'm gonna look at this. So let's go and find some open hats. Oh, this one's kind of cool. So open it up and then using tune, I like using tune to tune it down because that stretches it also, but you can't go too far because it sounds kind of nuts. I usually like a minus three semitones. That's kind of my, my vibe. Let's see. Awesome, but it's quiet. We'll turn it up. So let's go to the previous version. 
right? So here's this like new little B section. Doesn't sound too different, but there's one more thing. We can even take this uh, little pattern out here. Right, give it some more room to breathe. All right, lastly, one fun element to really push this over the top that's by far my favorite thing to do is add a rhythmic LFO to push things around in this funky way to the main ingredient of our song. And you can do this on anything. Any LFO that has, uh, or any filter, I should say, that has an LFO attached to it, like Auto Filter inside Ableton Live, Shaper Box is a great plugin, um, or this one here, the Digitac. All you're gonna do is, okay, we'll take all this stuff out except for this and the kick, right? We'll go to track eight and I'll say, uh, LFO one, go to our filter frequency. Right, you could turn this up. Cool, it already sounds tight. But I think one thing that's important to know is that speed and our BPM multiplier act together and they are already by default synced to the tempo. But our speed, the speed, if I hold this down, is set to 48. 48 means 48 steps, right? At least that's how I think of it. I could be way freaking wrong about that. But if I turn this up to 63.99, it's basically 64. Our BPM of 16, bum, 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 bum. It's perfectly on the tempo, right? But it's a lot faster. If I leave this at 40, 48, it does this weird, almost like triplet dotted timed feel, right? But here's another thing to take note. Our LFO right now in mode is just set to free. So it's always running in the background. Every time I press play, it's at a different position. Right? It doesn't get reset with the tempo. So I want it to get reset with the tempo. And the easy way to do this is either set it to trigger mode or key sync or whatever it might be called. But what I'm gonna do more importantly is say on the first step, set it to re-trigger mode. The reason I'm doing this and not just turning it to re-trigger mode is because all these other steps that do not happen perfectly on the one will cause it to kind of jump around in a weird way. So listen. Right, we'll turn our multiplier up. And I'll just turn our speed all the way up for now so we get the idea. Right, if this was set to trigger, this would throw it off. Listen, oh, there it is, watch. Right, that might be what you want, but that's not what I want. So I wanna set this back to free and make sure that our first step is set to trigger. Now, another fun thing to really take this over the top is to mess with the phase point. And by moving our phase point, all this means is on this re-triggered LFO, where in the LFO cycle does it start? At what point in its phase, right? I think that's how you say it. Essentially saying it's going all the way up to 128, all the way down to negative 128 or 64, negative 64, or plus five voltage, minus five voltage, and starting at zero. This here is starting at zero. Here, it's you can see on the wave shape, it's starting basically all the way up the top. So, right, if I slow it down, or we can really hear this if I set it to like a sawtooth. Right, it's almost like jerking around. If I set our phase even weirder, listen to this. Right, it finds these new kind of multiples and these weird kind of rhythms. This gets a little harsh for me, but where I love it is in a triangle. And I'll just do a little bit, maybe start it at the top in a little less depth. Right, maybe even less depth. If we put this right on the money, you'll hear that it's like boom, 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 watch. Right, boom, boom. And I love doing this 48 weird triplet thing because that's where these cool rhythms kind of come from. And if this was set to 16th and a down saw. Ah, all right, so I'm gonna turn our depth down even more. And I'm gonna go to our filter, turn this down a little bit more and start turning up our amp envelope or our filter envelope, I should say. Give it a little bit more attack. And delay it a little bit. I'll turn this up a little bit. And then I'll turn our fade on. Another fun thing is if you look at the trigger, you have an LFO trigger, and this is also saying which settings will trigger the LFO. And this also means its fade 
or whatever other settings that might be applied here, you can say do it or don't. And I can even say the same for the filter. So say I don't want the filter to be re-triggered here. Watch this. And then it stays closed and then whomp, opens up again. But this is the one where it stays closed. Right? But again, I don't want that. Now let's bring it all in. Right, let's take some notes in. Let's bring in that string. Cool. Now you go and create something new. Until next week, my friend, share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.